Uh, not sure why it's yellow. It could be that. I think it's <laughs> exponent. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Um, <laughs> no, no, thank you. Okay. Transformation. Same stuff. We're looking at AKDC. I'm going to start off with translations. In other words, B and C. And then we'll take a look at A and K. But it all starts with a parent function that takes the form of log x. So again, it could be log two, it could be log three, it could be log four, it could be whatever. But just for now, we're gonna do log 10 uh, for the sake of log 10, okay? Uh, if you remember, an exponential function will look something like this. It will all have a uh, y-intercept of zero, one. And then if this was if this was y equals 10 to the power of x, if x is 1, what's y? 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we'll do one more accuracy point. Let's do when x equals negative 1. Well, 10 to the power of negative 1, that's 1 over 10 to the power of 1, right? It's 0 0.1, it's, it's way down here. So if I were to draw the parent function, I just in pencil, because you don't need to have this, this wasn't part of the job description, okay? It would look like that. So what does a log function look like? A couple of things right away you can, you can plot just from these accuracy points. Go ahead, Maxim, uh, Mason, sorry. Yep. I know I have one here. And then if you know it's gonna be 110, just swap the numbers. And one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And then from there, you could either plot more accuracy points or you can use what you know of logarithmic functions and just lightly sketch what that parent function would look like. It'd be like that. It's not the best curve, I'm sorry, um, but you get the point. These two points, or if you chose to do the third one too, these three points are going to be transformed with a D value of two and a C value of negative five. So two to the right, five down. If you want a further, uh, I guess, extra aid, extra help, Consider how there is a vertical asymptote right at the y-axis. If you are shifting to the right, does that asymptote move? Yes. If I'm shifting up or down, does that asymptote move? No. So you only have to worry about the D value. So I'm going to move this point to across and five down, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to move this point, the x-intercept, one, two, one, two, three, four, five down. And this point too, that's a 0 0.1. It's gonna be one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Just off of the So you could sketch it if you understand what's happening, but if you want extra help, remember that uh, the vertical asymptote, one, two, and one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Which we don't care about. So the vertical asymptote has shifted to the right. So the transformed function is now 
there. Yes. So I was the Yes, I would say yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, correct. Correct. So yes, uh, the, the phase, uh, the shift, the horizontal shift left or right will move the vertical asymptote. Yes, Kinda? That's right. So if you look at the exponential, on the right side, it's reaching infinity, correct? But on the left side, it's infinitely getting close to a zero, but not quite a zero, because it's one over something, right? It's always one over. So there is an asymptote or n behavior that's an asymptote on the left side. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the other hand, if we were talking about a decay, so it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, there is an asymptote on the right side. Okay, so using this second curve that we drew, let's talk a little bit about domain. X belongs to any real number, but X has to be greater than the two, good. X is greater than the two. In terms of range, it's a little hard to see, but the exponent does not stop. It will continue going up forever and ever and ever. It'll take a long time for this to ever reach above, but it's possible, okay? It's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Range, could be any number, technically speaking. It's, it's, it's going to be really hard to see, but it is still going up. It's constantly going up. Oof. With that said, if the range could be any number, do, do we have an x intercept? We do. Well, that's annoying. Can we calculate it? Let's give it a shot. What is f of x when is, sorry, f of x equal to a zero? That means zero is log x minus two minus five, which means five is log x minus two. Ugh. Is there a way to calculate that? Ugh. Yeah? Well, what should we do? Shouldn't we try to isolate X to find what X is? How do we get rid of a log? How do we do the opposite of a log? What's the, what's the opposite oper quote unquote operation? It's an exponent. So what's the base? And what's five represent? The exponent, and we can say that 10 to the power of five is equal to X minus two. So it's the opposite of what we were working on in the previous lesson. So one with five zeros behind it is equal to X minus two, therefore, what is my x-intercept? Other way. Yeah. I told you, it's going to take forever. It's going to take a long time for this to actually hit the x-axis, but it does. It has to go as far as that to actually hit the zero. As for the y-intercept, well, f of zero, right? What is log of 
zero minus two minus a five. And before you go ahead and calculate, will it ever touch the y-axis? No. no. So you're going to expect to have something going on here. When you try doing the log of negative two, you're going to get an error. Tell me why. Mathematically, why does that, why can't we solve it? Yep. No, no, not graphically, but algebraically. So number wise, calculation wise, why is this not possible? Think in terms of exponents. Kinda? When do we get a negative answer when you do 10 to the power of something? That can't happen. If that were to happen, I need a negative 10 to the power of something, right? Which also we wouldn't be able to do. You can't have a negative base for logarithms for certain reasons. Uh, wait a minute, am I wrong? Yeah, it makes things really weird if you have a negative base. Yeah, okay. So for now, just know that it makes sense graphically and it does make sense mathematically. You can't, th this is impossible. So lastly, the asymptote, there is a vertical asymptote when X equals two. There it is. Questions on that? It's yeah, we shifted the asymptote, the y, the vertical asymptote to the right by two. Okay. Um, all right. We'll go through stretches and reflections. We'll do that together. We're gonna use a step-by-step -step method because this is not periodic, it's not sinusoidal. And the rest of the stuff is just extra practice. As much as I want to do extra practice with you, I'm actually going to leave it because I know you have a test tomorrow or quest tomorrow. Okay. Let's do this. Once again, I'm going to draw the parent function of log base 10 using accuracy points. I have a x axis here, x inches up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I have a point there. I have a point there. And my curve is going to look something like. So this is just log x. Next. <clears throat> Vertical stretch. So zero multiplied by three is still a zero. One multiplied by three is now three. And negative one multiplied by three is negative three. So this is my vertical stretch. It's been pushed or pulled this way. Next, each of these X marks are going to be multiplied by a, or multi, quote unquote multiplied. It is going to be horizontally compressed okay, by a factor of, so that's going to be, the K value is a negative two. Therefore, all the X values are going to be multiplied by a factor of negative one over two. So let's we'll start with a big one. Positive 10 is the X value. Multiply that by negative half. It's gonna be negative five. A positive value of one is going to be multiplied by negative half. And then that, oof, 0 0.1 right here, 0 0.1 is going to be multiplied by negative half. It's going to be even smaller. So my final curve is going to be there. 
And that is it was smushed. Before I get to the key features, any questions? No? Romain, x could be any real number, but instead of the right side, the x value is now only going to reside on the x side. x must be smaller than zero. The range, once again, it'll take a long time, but it will reach up and down, positive and negative infinity could be any real number. X intercept. We have an X intercept. Yes. Yes. But let's calculate it instead of getting, you could figure this out. What, you know what, what should it be? The X value here was a positive one. So the X value here is negative negative 0 0.5. Let's test it. When is f of x going to equal a zero? Well, that means uh, three log of negative two x is going to be a zero. Divide both sides by zero. That means log of negative two x has to be a zero. Well, what does that mean? How do we get x all alone? We have to get rid of the logs. So what's the opposite of log? We can rewrite this as 10 to the power of zero is going to be, and 10 to the power of zero, you know it's a one. There you go. Just like our diagram. Yes. I divided both sides by three. I'm, I'm trying to get in, get X all alone. So I'm taking away everything else. Yes. Oh, once again, uh, I am using what we learned in chapter 6.2, so the, the, the previous lesson. Remember, if zero equals log of negative two, two X, that means this is my answer and the zero is my exponent, right? That's like our previous, so, and, and, and the zero, which is the answer becomes the exponent um, when, we, when we change from log to exponential. So we're using our skills from 6.2, what we've been practicing. The y-intercept, if I plug in a zero, that becomes three log of zero. And is that possible? Log of zero, would the answer ever equal a zero? No. Okay. As you can see, there's never going to be a Y intercept. And that makes sense. 10 to the power of something gives me a value of zero. Will that ever happen? No. And then asymptotes, vertical asymptote x equals a zero. Uh, oh, two people. Uh, Joseph and Mason. If you if it's if it's painfully obvious like this one, it's very easy to know. And even if from point five you have to move to the right or whatever, it's easy to know. I don't think you need to. But um, if you didn't have to graph in the very beginning, uh, it might be necessary to figure it out. Like if it's not obvious, then yes. It could be. What if I shifted to the right from here? Then it would cross over like this. So there could be a y-intercept. No, please do it by transformation. The reason being, 
sometimes it gets really messy. Another question? Yes. No. The only reason box method worked was because we can cre we create one and we copy and paste. There's no copying and pasting here. No, you have to use, uh, you would have to use uh, the accuracy points. The best way you could wrap your head around it, you don't have to worry about this. Sorry, you don't even have to worry about that point. Just know that there should be an X intercept at uh, one zero, right? And then there's an asymptote here, right? That's, you know, if you can get that down, you can sort of estimate, and then you can estimate the transformations off of that. But more accurate, the better. Okay. If there aren't any other questions, uh, my expectation is, of course, to try these questions. And I will be putting an answer key online. But I would imagine a lot of you are still working on 5.4. And I recommend you do that. Uh, the rest of class is yours to use. Please use me for clarification and study hard.